and welcome. That was abrupt, but uh, I didn't mean to interrupt abruptly. Thank you for being here. Uh, I haven't streamed in a while, so I thought it'd be fun today because I have a point to streaming, which is got the Mixcast 4, got the Rodecaster Pro, got the overhead cam ready to go to show those things, got the Stream Deck pedal under the desk so I can switch angles without using my hands. That's pretty sweet, except for this one, which is the anamorphic cam with the lens flare. So we're, uh, we got everything going today. Um, yeah, basically, thank you for being here. I'm gonna check in with everyone real quick. We're gonna talk about these things and we got lots of times for questions and answers. I did put a poll in the chat because it's a thing you can do now. Uh, so if you wanna know where it's at, it's in the chat. And I'm just curious uh, what people would think about the Tascam versus the Roadcaster because I definitely have my thoughts. <laughs> I've been working on a video all this week, like the actual review that compares these two. It's really more of a review of the mixed cast, but of course I talk about the Roadcaster. Um, and it's it's interesting. I was surprised more than I expected to be. So let's just check in with everyone first real quick here though. Uh, some people are here early. I see lots of people, if you have questions, putting a cue in front of your question like this really handsome guy right here uh, suggested to do is, is smart. That's really, really nice. Uh, so I'm gonna get to those questions in a bit. Dan C. Bearded is here, Chris in Progress, Hassan, Beyond 280, lots of channel members here. That makes me excited. Drew from the Brew Log. Look at her. She's my wife. <laughs> I'm sure we got some bots in the chat. That's gonna be sweet. Uh, and I'm very, very curious to see what people think about these things. So thank you guys for being here. Uh, my audio on this, let's see, I can switch over here. Boop. So here's my wide angle. You can kind of see my overhead camera is the Sony a7 IV. And uh, I set up my audio on this mic Yes, right here, the Sennheiser MKH-50, and it sounded really good, but then it was so close to me that when I went to my overhead shot, the um, the mic was like right here, just blocking everything. So I had to push this mic back a little bit, but that doesn't matter because we're gonna be switching back between these mixers throughout the stream. Um, I've got dynamic mics, as you can see in the anamorphic shot. We've got the SM7B to test out there. We've got condenser mics, uh, boom mic, Close up, mic. We're gonna do everything. Thanks, Paul, for being being amazing, because Paul is amazing. All right, so um, it's great to have everyone here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off by talking about these things for a bit. So if I miss a couple comments, I apologize for that. Um, but if you have a question, put a Q colon, just like the fabulous Paul Duncan suggested, and then I can find your question a bit more easily. You can actually just do that very easily right here through Ecamm Live, and uh, and then we'll get to those. So. Actually, let's start with some questions before we talk about that. Uh, Nadim, what's up? How can I mute every guest mic individually using the Stream Deck and the Rodecaster Pro? I was thinking about this before the stream started, and I don't think that you can, because as far as I know, and I could be wrong, the Rodecaster and the Stream Deck don't talk to each other, even though I have my Stream Deck right here. Um, so there's no real way to do that because of the, there's just, as far as I know, not a way to do that. I could be wrong though, and if somebody knows a way to do that, I'd be, love to hear it. Uh, Dan Z. Bearded, as the school year is ending, God, I can't believe it's ending. What are your thoughts on your first year away as a full-time creator? Yeah, basically exactly a year ago, I left my teaching job to do this and uh, I am very, very happy. I can't tell you how happy I am to have done that. Like I was trying to put it into words. I can't. There are definitely things I miss like connecting with students and, and that kind of stuff, but everything else has just been infinitely better. I haven't set an alarm in the morning in a year, even though we still get up at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., but it's been amazing, and I'm super excited for you, Dan, as you make that switch, too. Chris is asking, uh, is there a feature on the Mixcast that you like better than the Rodecaster Pro or a feature, or vice versa? Uh, the answer is yes. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. There definitely are some questions. Are you able to test the noise level on the analog outputs on both the units? That's a good idea. I don't have the setup to do that now. Um, what I can tell you, though, at least for the headphones, I don't know if this applies to the monitor line output, the Mixcast has cleaner headphone outputs than the Rodecaster Pro. One of my very few complaints with the Rodecaster Pro is that the headphone preamps are a little bit noisy. Lots of people who have Rodecasters have noticed this. You have your headphones on and you kind of hear a hiss, um, but it doesn't actually go to the recording, it doesn't actually go to the output, it's just the headphone preamps. The Mixcast has uh, like 
totally clean headphone preamp. So um, I know it's not the exact question you were asking, but there we go. Uh, Drew, are you gonna do a video on the a7 IV at all? My plan is to actually do a video on all three of my Sony cameras. Uh, I just, <laughs> I've been distracted with other videos. But I figure that's not like, these cameras have all been out for a while, so it's not like, wow, gotta be the first to do it. Uh, Coach Constance, how do I get over my anxiety of the Tascam winning since I got my Roadcaster last week? Oh, I didn't look at the poll. Mine says Roadcaster is 74%. Uh, but I'll spoil my review on the video. They're both like honestly equally as capable. The Tascam is the first thing I found that is equal to the Roadcaster Pro. And it does have a few features the Roadcaster doesn't have. Roadcaster has a few features Tascam doesn't have. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, in just a second. Um, and yeah, better headphone outputs on the Tascam. So if you got a question about these or like any other audio video related questions, feel free to um, feel, feel free to just put a Q colon and I'll try to get to everything, try to get to everything else. So let's give some context first, right? Because we talked about um, Hilbert College Communications Department. I was a high school digital media teacher, started as an English teacher, and then I taught, well, I taught English and yearbook I taught yearbook for a lot of years. I taught English for two years and then digital media for nine years up until last year. So uh, one of the things I remember when teaching is context is very important. So let's give some context to what's happening right now. Uh, basically, the Tascam Mixcast 4, if you aren't familiar with it, last year I did review the Zoom PodTrack P8. Roadcaster Pro came out at the end of 2018. Zoom PodTrack P8 came out at like the end of 2020, summer of 2020. Tascam Mixcast 4 came out in August of 2021, and they're all fairly similar. If you look at them, they all kind of look the same. They have faders, they have channels, they have sound pad buttons so you can do goofy effects like, why did the bicycle fall over? Because it was too tired. Yeah, uh, that kind of thing. So they, they all look kind of the same, basically like podcast recorder mixers. What's very interesting to me is that the Roadcaster was originally released with podcasting as like its main thing. It was it was designed to be a podcast recorder. And then the streaming community, a lot of people in the streaming community kind of adopted the Roadcaster, and it started being really popular for streams, kind of like I'm doing right now and for interviews and all this stuff. So Rode has released like, gosh, I don't know, a lot of firmware updates over the past three years to add like, this thing is, is basically an entirely different device <laughs> than it was when I got it when it first came out, because I, I was so excited about it, I bought it as soon as it came out. Uh, and then these other things have popped up as well. My issue with the Tascam, which might not be fair, and I talk about this in my review video, is nothing to do with the actual unit. It's just that it showed up three years later at the same retail price. So like $600, $600 is the manufacturer's suggested retail price on these. And I kind of felt like if you're gonna show up three years later, you should be bringing a lot of new functionality to the table, or you should be bringing a lower price to the table. And this doesn't really do either of those. It does have some other features, but nothing crazy. Uh, so it's just kind of like, why wouldn't you just get the Roadcaster, which is the original? That was my question. And so I kind of didn't pay attention to the Tascam. But <laughs> seriously, for the past like three months, I'm not kidding when I say almost every day I get a message or a comment that's, somebody asking about the Tascam. And I'm kind of, I've never had that with something like where there's so many questions about it. So I thought there might be something special here or something interesting here, and it would be worth taking a look at. Um, so I'm very, very grateful. I don't know if anybody's watching from Sweetwater, but Sweetwater did send the Tascam to me so that I could make the review video for it. And then I have found a home for it, somebody who uh, needs it and will use it and get a lot of benefit out of it. So when I'm done, working on it for streams and videos and stuff, I'll send it away to somebody who can really use it. And that's gonna be awesome, because you know, I'm, I'm biased towards the Roadcaster. We all know I'm biased towards the Roadcaster. But if we don't look at the Tascam being three years late, if we don't look at the Tascam having its same price as the Roadcaster, it's actually really awesome. It is super well built, it's super well made, it does have some features that kind of like outdo the Roadcaster, um, and it's really fun. Uh, we'll we'll kind of talk about we'll talk about the differences in a second. So it's great, which is why like my conclusion at the end of the review view video I made is sort of if you don't have a 
a previous like I don't know leaning towards either one of these like if you're not someone who just likes road or likes Tascam just get the one that's cheapest and in stock because a lot of stuff is out of stock these days and uh you know just get the one that's in stock what, what's interesting to me though and maybe maybe I should say this um just conspiracy tinfoil hat is Roadcaster came out other similar devices have come out and we haven't really seen Rode even address that or respond to it or like add in features or anything. It makes me wonder if Rode is feeling confident that maybe they don't need to address all these other things. I don't know. The Roadcaster's three years old. I'm just curious. The Roadcaster's three years old. That's a long time. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about the differences between these, but let's just check in with everybody real quick here because that's the whole point of a live stream, right, is to, like, interact. <laughs> um, and we got bots. Uh, oh, Charles Matthews asking, you don't use a mouse, what are you using? Whenever I stream or do podcast recordings, I just use a trackpad because this is just an old Apple Magic trackpad from... takes AA batteries. It's so old. Um, but I like it because you don't hear the click, so I can do tap to tap to click and that way it doesn't get picked up on the microphone so i don't like using a trackpad it's not it's not as nice as a mouse and i did get this super sweet blue magic mouse from colorware because not like sponsor like i paid for it but you can get the magic mouse in any color you want over there um, but it's clicky you know you would hear me like constantly throughout the stream it gets annoying so i use this because it's silent uh, and i really like that uh, let's see here. Um, oh, we got Lewis, Mr. Camera Junkie over here. Oh, we already talked about that one. Yeah, don't forget those likes, you know. <laughs> hey, we got Super Chats. Yay. <laughs> uh, thanks, TechMed, Rainer, Richter. You're just awesome with all your support. I got the Mixcast 4 and really like it, but it will be difficult for Tascam to compete with Rode because the brand is popular among content creators and the Rodecaster is long in the market. Yeah, Rode, like... I have made a lot of videos about Rode products on my channel, as you probably know. Um, and over the years, I've been fortunate enough to like meet people from Rode and they're super nice and they're super cool, which just kind of makes me like the company more. But prior to doing that, like, it wasn't until I started making review videos that I realized, oh man, there's so much Rode stuff over here. Like it, uh, I've ordered a lot of it and it's traveled down the road to our home to be here. So it's, it's just stuff, like I think I got my first road thing like 10 years ago. I got like one of the old video mics and my high school digital media programs. We had all kinds of road gear and it all just like worked really well. And I've just sort of stuck with it. I do like that they design and manufacture everything themselves. Um, some of their little stuff, like little adapters and things they don't manufacture. They're made in China, but all their mics, all their mixers, all their like stuff like that is made in Australia. Like if, if you call somebody like on the road customer support team in Australia, they can literally look out the window to see the factory where the stuff is being made. I think that's really cool. Um, I don't know. I like that a lot. So I'm definitely biased. Uh, thanks again, Paul, for all the reminders. Uh, live streaming with Ecamm, Tascam, or Podcaster. I'm assuming you mean Roadcaster. Uh, they're exactly the same functionality, and I'll be switching between them. Actually, I've been using the Roadcaster this whole time. Uh, let's switch over to the, the mix cast. So I am going to unplug my mic. I apologize for any... I'll mute this so you don't hear that sound. All right. Now you... Oh, that might be really loud. <laughs> now you should be hearing me... Da, 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 there we go. Now you should be hearing me on the, uh, on the mix cast 4. Exact same microphone. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a, sure. I'm not sure if there's any differences there. There shouldn't be. This is just a condenser mic with no settings, nothing. So here's one of the differences that I like the Rodecaster for. If I want to play with the Rodecaster, I push channel one, push that button, and now I can go in and adjust everything for channel one. The Mixcast, I can't do that. It does have a very nice touch screen, but if I want to change some of the settings on channel one right here, I have to press the menu, press this button, then select channel one, and now I have all those settings there. Uh, so I'm using a condenser mic. My gain is set to 32. It seems like it's leveling out pretty well. And uh, here's something that I really, I'm gonna put on my headphones so I can hear this. One of my favorite things about the Tascam is that uh, you can assign 
the sound pads to do more than just trigger sounds. You can also assign them. There are some built-in effects and you can assign them to trigger the different effects, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, so there's a couple effects. There's this one, but I can also pitch it down really low. So if I'm talking and I say, hey, uh, do you remember when Isaac Hayes was on South Park? And someone goes like, kind of, that was a long time ago. And I say, yeah, I remember they'd always walk up and he would say, hello, children. And they say like, hey, chef. Oh, I should have pitched it up. Anyway, I think this is fun. There's no real need to use it, probably, but it's super fun. I like that a lot. Uh, beyond that, the um, uh, there is a reverb effect. Well, let's turn on reverb. So yeah, uh, we'll go into this channel, go through my funky little like menu settings here. There's voice settings. I'll talk about those in a second. And then there are effect settings. So this is the voice changer, but there is also... What? Oh, we can only use one effect at a time. Where's my reverb? That's weird. Uh, reverb's not showing up right now. Why not? Is it because I'm, I'm not recording or anything? Hmm. I don't know. There is a reverb setting, but it won't. It won't show up. There it is. That's not intuitive. Uh, okay. So let's see here. Now there's reverb and there's like, uh, you can adjust the reverb level going in or if you want it to be pretty dry. Uh, this would be cool if you were using it, especially for any kind of like singing or um, like music related application. That's probably where reverb would come into play. Or if you were in just like a super dead space that just sounded unnatural. But you have small reverb, you have medium reverb, large reverb, large and in charge. Hello, in space. And then you do have some manual settings here so you can kind of like play around with it just a little bit if you want to. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna turn it off though for sanity's sake. And uh, we'll turn on the voice changer. Because uh, I think this is a lot more fun. So I like having the voice changer mapped here. So I can press it anytime. Uh, but that's one of the key differences, I guess, if you wanna ask what the differences are between uh, Mixcast and Roadcaster would be that uh, the way that you can incorporate those kinds of effects. The Roadcaster's effects are mainly geared towards, like if I go to audio processing, they're not really effects. It's like the high pass filter, the noise gate, the DS or the compressor, and um, some like equalizers and stuff, which is probably more important and a little more useful in a mixer like this. Let's switch microphones real quick. Um, I'm gonna turn on, let's see, how can we do this? I'm gonna mute this one and unmute this one. So now you should be hearing me here. All right, cool. So we got rid of some of that reverb in my room because now the microphone's a lot closer to me. This is a condenser microphone. This is the Earthworks Icon. Even though uh, you might look at it and say, I can't believe that it's the Icon because it looks like the Ethos. Well, wait, uh, Ethos is an appeal. That is a, which is the ethos pathos logos anyway uh it is the it just has a different windscreen on it so normally the the icon has this little windscreen on it but it doesn't reject plosives as much so i have the windscreen from the ethos on the icon and anyway that's what we're using right now running through the roadcaster pro again this is a condenser microphone so um it's easy to get proper gain levels on any of these with condenser microphones because they run off of phantom power and that just doesn't require as much gain. But in a little bit, we're gonna test out this guy right here, which is of course the SM7B, and would you believe that that requires a lot of gain? So we're gonna try that on both of these mixers to see how it performs with and without a speed, speed booster. <laughs> it's not a camera, with and without a signal booster. That's what we'll do. Let's check in with everyone real quick here. Uh, alrighty. Oh, thank you. Your live stream has the same high quality and image and sound as your edited videos. That's great. I would love for it to feel that way. It's just a little sloppier. <laughs> um, preamps, Sammy, we talked about headphone preamps. The Tascam has better headphone preamps, but mic preamps, we'll talk about that when we do the SM7B. Um, it's weird. We'll just say that, it's weird. Uh, oh, Heather's congratulating Dan. 
Yes. Uh, oh, Mac. Hey, speaking of someone who uses a Tascam all the time for live production, that's Homesick Mac. Super chatting for the crazy tech startup to start with. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. What's up, Buck? Does the Tascam have audio in or out ports? Yes. So uh, something that is really cool. Let's talk about some of the differences, I guess, right now, uh, because that's a good way. Some of the physical differences. So if we look at the front, things are arranged differently, but it's all kind of the same thing. We have four XLR channels. Wait, is that still? Oh, no, it's muted. We have four XLR channels, USB, smartphone, Bluetooth, sound pads. Four XLR channels, USB, smartphone, Bluetooth, sound pads. So exactly the same. Both of these have, you, have Bluetooth built in, so you don't need a, a separate um, like antenna or anything like you do with the Zoom. They have USB mix minus turned in. One thing, though, they both do have a headphone output on the front, but the Tascam's headphone output on the front is a TRRS output, which means you could connect some kind of microphone to it, like a little lavalier microphone, or if you have, you know, um, let's see if I can find it. If you have like a headset, you know, thing, like wired old school earbuds, remember these before AirPods? <laughs> if you have something like this, you could connect this and actually use that mic because. It's actually kind of nifty and smart how they did this. You can go into your channel and when you're adjusting your microphone, you probably can't see it because it's a little overexposed, but right here you can choose condenser or dynamic microphone. And what that does is just turn phantom power on and off. But right below that it says front or rear. So you can tell it if you have a condenser or a dynamic microphone plugged in to a 3.5 millimeter jack in the front. I did try it with the video mic NTG. It did not sound good, but I think that's, <laughs> maybe more mic than it than they planned for on the back i should have had a camera set up on the back um yeah you won't be able to see it there but on the back of it you do have a few changes this kind of goes in line uh with what i think it was sammy or oh no hassan was asking the smartphone channel super interesting here because it has a 3.5 millimeter input just like the roadcaster pro but it also has left and right quarter inch inputs and then there's a little physical switch that you can switch between them. So it just gives you more uh, more options of what you can send in. It has the same four, you know, both of these things have four headphone volumes and both of them have monitor outputs. There are mute and solo buttons for each channel. And then the Rodecaster does have one record button, which is also your record pause button. The Tascam has record pause, stop, and mark. So that's kind of cool because uh, sometimes what I'll do with the Rodecaster, if you want to record pause with it, I can probably actually even show you. So if you're recording, it turns red. And when you want to record pause, you just hold it down until it turns orange. And now you're in record pause mode. And when you're ready to start recording again, you just press it and it turns red again and keeps recording. The problem is if I don't hold it down long enough sometimes, I just want to pause and I go, okay, I'm going to pause, but I don't hold it down long enough. Then I end the recording before I meant to end the recording. That's always a little bit frustrating. So what I, what's kind of cool with the task cam over here is that these are all separate. So this is record pause. It works the same way. Like there, it's recording now. And then I can hold it down to record pause and it's flashing and I can press it again to keep recording. But if I want to stop, then I can press stop. And it's actually gonna bring up a prompt to confirm that. And then it brings up a touch screen where I can name my file right there, which is actually super cool. And then there's a marker too. So while you're recording, uh, say there's a part here where it's like, I mess up and I need to edit something out, I can mark that. And then when I go back through the file, I can find that marker. And and uh, you can do that with the Roadcaster too with the same like re record pause thing. But this is, this is a little bit of an easier, oops, stop. <laughs> this is a little bit of an easier setup because it it's all separate buttons. So I like that a lot. There's this talk back button too, which is kind of cool. So this will bring channel one to just the headphones. So if you have like four people connected over here and they all have headphones and this person will call them like the director or the producer, they need to talk to everyone. They can push this button, hold it down. It's just, it's responsive to when you hold it. You can hold it down and then their voice will not go to the output or the recording. It will only go to the headphones. So it's a good way for multiple people to communicate at once without affecting the actual output. It's pretty sweet. Um, and, oh, and, and the other difference is the Tascam is a full-size SD card. I really like that. SD Lightful. B 
because it's just easier to transfer files than with a micro SD card. And it has a 3.5 millimeter output on the back. So you have all the same outputs as the Rodecaster, but also additionally a 3.5 millimeter, which is awesome because if you wanna connect like just a little tiny speaker or something, or even another recorder, you can, you can do that super easily through there. You don't need adapters or special cables or anything. I love it. So those are definitely some, some pluses there. Uh, Grant, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for granting me the pleasure of a super chat. Your videos help me improve my quality so much. How closely you analyze tech is so helpful. I'm really, really happy to hear that. Hopefully it's helpful. I usually don't spend too much time diving into like crazy in-depth tech specs because there are people who are better at that than me. Um, I try I try to take things like, hey, if you're one person or a small team and you want to use stuff to, you know, level up your audio and video, this is how it'll work in like a reasonable, real world, one person production crew kind of workflow. That's sort of what I like. Uh, there we go. So Hassan, that was your question. I don't show speed. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Focusrite Scarlett 2i4? I have the 2i2 and it's great. Um, I like how compact it is. Uh, it's great when using condenser mics. It's definitely not, doesn't have a lot of gain. So if you're using a dynamic mic, you need a signal booster with it. Uh, my favorite thing though to use with the Focusrites is instruments. So plugging in stuff like guitars and you know mic, mics that are connected to drums and stuff. Um, I love the Tascam as an instrument for music, but if you're using a condenser mic, it can be a great spoken word mic interface, of course. And if you don't mind using like a speed booster, like a Fethead or a cloud lifter, then it's great too. It's so small and compact. Um, it's hard to go wrong with those things. And it needs more butt ump sound effects. There we go. <laughs> hey, super chat from Nadim. Thank you so much. Always appreciate it. I almost accidentally hit the ban button. <laughs> I would love for someone to super chat and then get banned. Here's Peter. I bought the Canon EOS R because I got fluenced by Tom, and the week I got the same stuff my YouTuber has, he switched to Sony. My EOS R is in the drawer right over there. It's uh, it's not going anywhere. Don't worry. It's still a good camera. I still think it's a great value because it's like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars for a full frame mirrorless camera, especially if you don't need a complete four K workflow. The R is still great, um, but I, I'm liking my Sony cameras too. Um, let's see here. Uh, we're going to talk about the SM7B real quick here. Proper line output goes straight to the A10 Mini. I didn't even think of that use case. Yes, of course. That line output makes it so easy to use with the A10. The Rodecaster is a little... I don't even use it with the A10, honestly. I just connect them both separately to USB. Uh, where's our poll at? Rodecaster Pro has 81%. Road keeps updating and renewing the device, definitely. Uh, oh, uh, Homesick Mac has been using the Tascam for a while now. And so now we have someone who, I've had it for like a few weeks, but he's been actually using it, owning it for a long time. So his reasons were labels on the pad buttons. Um, he's used their stuff since the 80s, so reputation. I think that's why I started getting so many questions about it is because people, Tascam is just super popular and people like it and trust it. Um, and yeah, so that makes sense to me. Uh, those are all good reasons, and it sounds great. Uh, Grant, uh, saving for Windows PC, should I upgrade to a cheaper PC to start improving stream or save for higher performance? I haven't used a PC since 2005, <laughs> um, but I think the same applies regardless of like operating platform. Get the best computer you can afford. Obviously, one of the benefits to a PC is it's a little more modular, a lot more modular than a Mac is, so... You don't have to commit to everything right away. You know, you can always change your graphics card or your RAM or whatever later on, but definitely get the best thing you can afford right now, especially depending on what kind of streams you're going to do. If you just need a camera to go into a computer and stream, you don't need as much as if you're going to have a camera, but you're also going to be like running applications. You know, like if I wanted to do live editing where I'm streaming and I'm also running Final Cut Pro and editing and stuff, that's going to take a lot more power than just running the camera in the stream. But yeah, so get the best camera you can afford. Obviously, one of the biggest benefits to PCs is their upgradability. So that means, you know, if there's some areas where you can't get as much as you want right now, maybe down the line you'll be able to. Uh, which one is better? We'll, we'll talk about that. There, there, there isn't a clear winner. Uh, one of the things I like about your videos when you switch between cameras, do you keep both cameras recording at the same time? Yes, uh, my videos, 
since I do use the ATEM and one of the weaknesses is it's limited to 1080 and I like my videos in 4K, the cameras are just recording the whole time um, and then I just edit it all together in Final Cut Pro. So it, it's just the files get big, but otherwise it's not too bad. Uh, oh, interesting. Level up with Mike Newman. I switched from the Rodecaster Pro to the Podtrack P8 due to the increase in gain and extra XLR input. Oh, that's right. It did have more XLR. How does the mix, mix cast stack up against the P8? We'll look at the gain as soon as I'm done catching up with comments right now. Um, I actually like it better than the P8 personally, but I didn't need more than four XLR either. Uh, d -d 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 preferred voice over there. <laughs> voice effect. I'm falling behind. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, finally, catching up on my stream. Thank you for the super chat. I'm eyeballing that task cam pretty hard. Well, yes, it's pretty awesome. Jake Sloan. Oh my gosh, Tom Buck is live. Tom Buck is live. <laughs> Uh, how can I use my phone with the Rodecaster Pro on Instagram for doing live streams? Uh, how did I do that? I've done it on the iPad because any of these are USB-C and my iPad's USB-C and I connect it there and then I can use it with the Instagram app on iPad. I haven't found a way to do it with the phone, but I'm guessing if you have a phone with USB-C or an adapter, you'd be able to do it that way too. Uh, Nadim, what's the best way to accept calls in a live stream and let the guests in the audience hear the calls? Uh, I mean... If you're using one of these and you just want voice, the easiest thing to do is set up some way for people to call in on your computer, like a Google voice number or anything even, um, or a link, like a, a link of some kind, whatever you want to pull people in, and then just run the audio from your computer into your mixer and just make sure that USB mix minus is turned off. So that way, no, no, USB mix minus, shoot. It would come in but you would want to be able to hear the person. I use Ecamm. I use Ecamm's interview mode because I think that's where you would need, you would probably need like loopback where you could create a virtual audio device so you can run the call into the roadcaster with mix minus turned on and that way you can hear the person, they can hear you, but you're not creating an echo. And then through loopback, you could take their audio and create a virtual device that you could select in your streaming. I just use Ecamm. I just use Ecamm. You can send out a link and then the person can join and it's super easy. So I use Ecamm. Uh, headphone preamps on the Mixcast, better than the Roadcaster for sure. Uh, $2 from Joseph. Thank you. Which one has better? Man, see, I knew I wasn't alone with the Roadcaster headphone issue. Definitely, definitely an issue. Uh, I'm trying to just catch up. I'm not trying to be rude by skipping over comments here. Uh, oh, sorry. Caught that one up there. Sup, man. Paul's here. Okay. Your channel is my inspiration. Quality, details, production, audio. I hope one day. Uh, I appreciate that. It's just making videos is very good practice for making videos. So you always get a little bit better. Art, what's up, Art? Um, you've got to ask a question. I was never able to get the, ro the roadcaster to run off the USB power cable. I tried multiple banks. Yeah. So here's what's weird with that. Um, I have a really old, really cheap USB power bank from Monoprice that I got like eight years ago. There's nothing special about it. It was $17 and it works perfectly on the Rodecaster. I don't know why. It does say that it has a, uh, like an iPad or a tablet output. So I think one of its outputs is higher power than the other. And it runs the Rodecaster fine over USB. I use it Whenever I have a video where the Rodecaster is not connected to anything but powered on, I just have that USB thing taped to the bottom of it, and it works out really, really well. What's up, Ramon? Hi. Uh, we talked about focus right. We want to focus right on everything. Uh, let's see here. Drew, what's up? Strange question. Do you know if you ever need an XLR1 out to two connector cable setup? Hmm. Do you know... Or have you ever needed an XLR1 out to two? I haven't, but I could see needing it. I feel like I've done this when like setting up old podcasting setups and things where there's like daisy chaining stuff together. But since getting like Rodecaster and stuff, I haven't, haven't had to do that. How do you feel about USB mics? I like XLR microphones because there's so much variety to them. So that's why I prefer them and I have the mixer. But USB mics are great because there's so many really good ones now. And I love recommending them to people who just need like a single microphone. They don't wanna mess with anything, plug and play, super simple, super affordable, and they sound great. You can't really go wrong with that, you know? When you're running XLR Direct to the FX3 or using auto levels, I have 
uh, my gain on the FX3 is set to like four and a half. I keep it on manual. And then I just have it set where I'm looking at it right now, trying to see. And I have it set where channels one and two are like mixed and connected. So that way it's, it's like a mono stereo. That doesn't make sense. But yeah, there's not a left and right difference. Obviously, your desk is beastly. Which device feels more discreet? So you can probably see they're the exact same size in terms of footprint, but maybe you can see in this angle here. Uh, oops, did I push the wrong one? What did I do? Boop, there we go. Uh, maybe you can see if I remove the comment. The Tascam is like a little bit, oh no, here's the Rodecaster, which is actually very thin, but it sits up at an angle. The Tascam does not sit much of an angle, so it is, um, it's a little more discreet. Yeah, but they're, they're pretty much the same. Uh, do you know if Tascam's consistently updating the firmware? <laughs> they did release one recently, and I tried for like two hours to get the update to work, and I could not get it to work. I followed all their directions. So definitely fail points on that. Um, I don't know Tascam's reputation for firmware. It's gonna be hard to beat Rode, but the Mixcast does have an application. Uh, it's actually a whole editor. It's not just the, like Rode has the companion app that lets you do some of the effects and transfer files and stuff. This has that, but it also is like a multi-track recorder. So if you don't have any other software, you don't wanna use it, you can just, it's free. And you can go to Tascam's website, it's Tascam Podcast Editor, and just download it right now. Um, even without the mixed cast, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that's awesome. So I don't know if they're going to consistently do that, but I think they're really trying to compete with Rode, and I feel like I feel like they're going to want to keep doing that. <laughs> uh, Mac, be aware Rode has much better customer support. It took me ages to get a living person to check the issue with the audio delay function. Now they won't respond anymore. Yeah, Rode is pretty world-class. Thanks, Paul, for being the best, best mod. <gasps> FitLab Super Chat, thank you. I appreciate it. appreciate all your support. Uh, it makes makes a lot. Had issues with both. Do you have a video on it or advice? Wait, A10 Mini. Yes, I literally have a video. I think it's called A10 Mini and Roadcaster <laughs> Pro. Uh, but what I do is I just plug them in separately. You can connect them, and I just find it simple. They're both, I, they're both just connected separately for me, and that's what works. Yeah. How are you capturing video today? Top through through the Black Magic. Uh, everything's running through the black magic except the top view because the a7 IV can just be a USB webcam is just connected on its own USB thing so that way it's its own video source and then I can switch to it with the foot pedal and everything else um, my main camera my GoPro camera and my anamorphic camera are all running through the a10 mini there we go I would pick the Rodecaster Pro and we'll explain that I know I keep saying we're catching up but yeah this is 24 millimeter f1.4. This is uh, anamorphic 50 millimeter Sure 50 millimeter, and I'll push all these buttons now. This is the Sigma 24, the Canon Sigma, but it's adapted for Sony. So I have the MC11 adapter on there. Thank you for all the super chats. This is amazing. Long time lurker, occasional commenter. Really appreciate you and your Heather's creative work. Thank you so much. Uh, I really, 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 really appreciate that. So let's talk. Uh, let's talk about some of the differences here because I've seen people go like, hey, so what's the difference? Let's do that and then we'll come back to the to the chat and hang out for a bit. Um, and then we'll actually, we need to switch over to the task cam. I've been on the Roadcaster way too long, so let's do that. Let's do the SM7B even, actually. Would you believe it? Yes, so I've already got it here. I'm gonna mute this, wrong channel. And then I'm going to unmute this and plug in my headphones so I can hear myself. There we go. Now I am on the SM7B running directly into the Mixcast. And when I say directly, I mean with no uh, no signal booster. So uh, we had a few people talk about this question here. Uh, SM7B is a dynamic microphone, so dynamic microphones require a lot more gain. Uh, condenser microphones, since they run on phantom power, they don't require as much gain. The SM7B is notoriously a good sounding microphone, but also a microphone that requires a lot of gain to sound its best. So what the Tascam has, if I stop talking, I think you can hear some hiss because I can hear it in my headphones and I know it's not the preamps. The Tascam has more gain than the Rodecaster. So the Rodecaster has 55, 56 decibels of gain. The Tascam, and maybe somebody here knows, I'm actually a little confused because if you go into some of the settings, so if I go like into 
mic, what am I on mic number three? And I go here, I can change this little gain dial from zero to 50. But I don't think, actually, it needs to go up a little higher, I think. So, ba -ba 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 -ba, test, 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 there we go. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of background hiss right now. So that goes to 50, but I don't think that that means that the mix cast only has 50 decibels of gain, because if I look at the manual, just down under my desk, or Tascam's website, I'm seeing two things. I'm seeing 66 and 76 decibels being thrown around as numbers, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know which it is. Uh, the fact that I can connect the SM7B and turn it up this loud, even though this sounds bad, makes me think that there's at least 66 decibels of gain, but it's really not super clean gain. I wouldn't want to use this. So here's an example. I have the FET head right here. Uh, let's, you know what, let's do something to try to protect your ears as much as possible. Um, I saw someone asking for the colored cables. There is a link in the description. So if you want to check, that. I just get them on Amazon. There's nothing super special about them. Uh, so we'll connect. This to channel two, and now mute this for the sake of your Here, I can unmute that one while we do this. So now, oops. <laughs> okay, uh, so now I've got the SM7B connected to channel two, and this is where things get a little, little confusing here. I can go to channel two. I'm using a dynamic microphone, but because I want to use the cloud lifter with it, or the, sorry, the fed head with it, I need to select condenser because that will then turn on phantom power. And now you can see we've got a signal there and I can turn this up to right probably about here. So instead of having to go into like 40, 41, now with the SM7B, I can keep it right around 25. And if I switch to the SM7B, now this is the SM7B running through the FET head instead of direct. If I stop talking, it sounds a lot quieter. So the Tascam has enough gain to run the SM7B without a, a signal booster, but the sound is so much better when you are using a signal booster. So that amount of gain isn't super clean. Couple other weird things though. Um, I did learn as I was making my review, one of my favorite things about the, well here, let's switch back over. One of my favorite things about the FET head is the fact that you can actually connect it directly to a mixer or you know even a microphone and you don't have to use the extension cable so usually when i'm using it with the roadcaster i just have it plugged in the back of the roadcaster so i tried doing that here with the sm7b and then what happened was this listen to how terrible this sounds there's so much noise and like my voice is being drowned out. It's super weird. So that sounded bad. I guess what we could also try though is, I didn't try this yet. I'm gonna plug the cable directly into the Tascam and then we will see if I can plug this directly into the mic. Do we have that same weird issue? So, oh, we don't. Interesting, this sounds real good because it's right, the mic's running right into it, not through any cable. So for some reason, the FET, the Tascam does not like it when the FET head is connected directly to it. It needs to either, either be connected directly to the mic and then running through a cable or um, running through like a little extension cable, a patch cable. It's just a weird thing. I don't, I don't know why that is. Uh, it's just, it's just sort of strange, but, uh, there's one other thing. No, this won't fit on this, on this mic stand. So I do want to try some of the built-in noise suppression features on the Tascam because it does have, I think, I don't really like using auto like noise reduction and noise gates and things on these mixers. Cause I just don't feel like it sounds the best, but let's flip over back here. Dynamic microphone. Okay, now we're back on the SM7B running directly into the Tascam. No signal booster or anything like that. You can hear some of that hiss back there returning, I think. Boy, yeah, okay. Uh, so let's go into, let's play around with some of the voice effects. Uh, not, not like the reverb effects, but you can change some of the tone things. Oh, I didn't realize this was even on. 
this is the oh there's the bassy sm7b sound right there dang okay yeah i forgot about this i had this problem when i was doing the review it comes with like this mid-tone turned on which does not sound great and if i turn that off here's the sm7b i'm so sorry <laughs> that I did that whole thing where it might have sounded very tinny and weird, but yeah, it doesn't have to. You can change your tone to deep, you can change it to mid, you can change it to bright, and you can also manually adjust some of what you want. I hate all of this, so I leave that off. There is a compressor. Um, you can do soft, hard, or manual. That's what she said. And I, eh, the compressor's fine. I usually use the master compressor on the Rodecaster, but I haven't been using this one here. However, we do have some processing options on the Mixcast. We have a de-esser. Yes, sir, it's a de-esser. But as you can hear, it, it's by default set very aggressive. So what I need to do is go in here and like play with this a bit. I'm not going to do that right now because it's, it's a pain. But there is a noise suppressor. Wow. This really kind of messed everything up. <laughs> so there's no more hiss, but there's also no more bass. So now what we can do is we can adjust the low cut filter to bring in some of the bass, and then we can also try to, let's see here. Uh, let's see, da 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 da. How aggressive is this? There, that's not super aggressive. Let's see, attack, attack. Okay, you can hear, this is, this is how you can tell now how much, how much uh, noise there is in the gain of the task amp. So as I'm talking, Behind my voice, you can hear game, but when I stop talking, it's going to close the noise gate and you're going to hear a silent signal. And you can hear it opening and closing the noise gate. I don't know if it's like physically opening and closing, but you can hear the, the hissing fading in and fading out, which I think just kind of goes to my point that while you do have a lot of gain here, eh, I don't know that it's really an advantage over the Rodecaster because I still think that if you're using something like the SM7B, you really need to be using a um, a signal booster with these. Whoa, that sounded that sounded terrible. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alrighty, uh, let's switch back to let's switch back to the Roadcaster and the Earthworks Icon. Uh, I can't hear myself. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, now let's catch up with some stuff there. So, um. So that was kind of like the question about gain between these two. I, I don't really think that is an advantage of the Mixcast over the Rodecaster. There is one thing, though. There's a couple things that are advantages, I think, though. Uh, a big one in the Mixcast being... Where is it? I'm still not totally used to their menus. Yes, if we go into hardware functionality, there are a few different things you can change. Multi-track is really cool because it's very easy when you select the Tascam as an interface for... Uh, for anything, through the Tascam podcast editor application, you can select which channels you want to send out. So Rode has multi-track on or off. If multi-track is on, you get 14 tracks. If it's off, you get one track, no in between. The Tascam, you can choose which ones you actually want to use through their software application, which is super cool and really, really helpful. Uh, but what it has built in right here, if you can see the top down shot, is a USB delay. So this is based on milliseconds. You can go from zero to 2000 milliseconds. Right now I have a five frame delay turned on in Ecamm Live to try to keep everything synced up. But if I weren't using Ecamm or I weren't using software that could do that, I can do that right here in the Mixcast. I can add that delay so that when I'm using this for streaming, my audio and my video sync up. And the reason that things go out of sync isn't, isn't like a hardware problem. It's just kind of no matter how you stack it, this is a very general explanation. A video signal is just like heavier than an audio signal. So it doesn't matter that they're the same connection, the same everything. It's like if you had two equally fast runners, but you gave one of them a bag of marshmallows to run with and the other a bag of cinder blocks to run with, it doesn't really matter that they're the same capabilities. The one carrying the lighter load is probably going to get there first. So that's usually what happens when you stream. The audio gets there first, video shows up later, and then there's, they're out of sync. So you add a delay in your audio so they can catch back up to each other. Um, and it's really cool. That's built in here. That's been a wish list feature for the Rodecaster Pro. Um, and there are, I should also mention, in the Tascam podcast editor application, there are also more 
effects. There's like phasers and delays and there's all kinds of effects. And I think the reason that they're not included in the unit itself is because uh, of just literally like onboard processing power. Um, meaning that like the computing power in this just isn't enough to process all that, which is why I think things like reverb haven't been officially released on the roadcaster. There's been some like beta firmware updates that have that and they don't, it doesn't show up in the final release. And I think that's because as much as the roadcaster has been updated through firmware, they're starting to hit the limit of like what it physically can do. <laughs> and so now it needs like, you know, there's certain things it just can't do because of whatever computing pieces are in here, just can't handle it as much. So uh, clearly though, I think you could probably fit a USB delay in the roadcaster. That would be super cool. That's definitely an advantage to the Tascam. Um, yeah, so they're they're both uh, they're both pretty great. Let's jump back in. I'm gonna just check out questions first, and then we can go into general chitty chat. Uh, let's see. If you have a question, remember just put Q colon in front of it. it. Doesn't have to be about either of these mixers. Uh, I just thought since I have the mix cast, this would be a good chance if someone does have have questions for it. Um, we see Paul just being the best moderator, best moderator in the world. Uh, let's see here. Coach Constance. I constantly appreciate you too. Appreciate you and your wife's content learning a lot. Will you tell us about your community and courses? Sure. Yes. If you, if you are a YouTube creator, or someone who has a YouTube channel they're actively working on. My wife and I run a community. It's free to join. You can go to justcreatemore.com and it's hosted through Mighty Networks. She does have a, uh, like a YouTube the zero to YouTube hero, I <laughs> say a, a course to get you from zero to YouTube hero. That's what the course is called. Um, where it's like, if you want to get started with your channels, how to do that. The community is totally free though. And then I have two courses about podcasting. Um, so you can go to hi, my name is tom.com. You see courses right there. Uh, one of them is the podcaster playbook, which is production side of podcasting. So how to produce your show from start to finish, you like have your first episode done. And the other one is the podcaster idea book, which is coming up with an idea for a show that you could turn into, you know, multiple episodes, keep going, keep it sustainable. You can do, um, their, their courses are both at your own pace. So you can join them anytime you have, you have access for at least a year. <laughs> um, but it's lifetime access, but it's at least a year. Cause at some point, like probably not gonna be updating the courses in 2062 or something, you know, realistically. Uh, so at least a year, but probably more. And uh, they're, they're super cool. They can go together. You can take them separately. So those are the courses. Thanks for asking. It's like when you, when you have someone in the audience, it's like, what do they call it? A plant? You're not a plant, but um, or a tree. But it's when the person like, hey, can you tell me about this very specific thing that is helpful? Uh, let's see here. Any difference in audio recording format? Uh, no, they're both super versatile, but this is very important. Both of these do 48,000 hertz, which is great for video. So both of these are excellent if you plan on using them f as part of a video workflow. The biggest negative to the Zoom PodTrack P4 and P8, for some reason, even though they sound great, they don't do 48,000. They only do 44.1, which is like great for audio only, but it's not ideal if you have a video heavy workflow. So both of these are a little more ideal and well suited for video, but um, they're they're pretty similar. Otherwise, they're uh, I don't show speed. Are you gonna get the Mac Studio and Studio Display? No, <laughs> uh, because I have my I guess I don't need to get it. But back there, my 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is only from October, it's the M1 Max with what 32 gigs of RAM, 24 core GPU, two terabyte hard. It's amazing. It's such a good computer. I have no need for another computer and I'm running the stream, all of this <laughs> actually. So this is, this is, I guess I could prove two points here. This whole stream is still running off of the base model Mac mini that I got at the beginning. I got it on January 1st of 2021. Um, the cheapest Apple computer you could buy, the cheapest computer I've ever bought, $700. I think they're even cheaper now. Um, eight gigabytes of RAM. 256 gigabyte hard drive. All of this is running through that right now. So that includes Ecamm Live. That includes the ATEM with three cameras. That includes the overhead camera running in as a different input. And it includes both of these mixers running in. And of course the stream, like the software and, and everything like that. And that's the absolute base model. Um, and my M1 Max computer over there, it just, when I have like 
high resolution files from all three of these four full frame 4K cameras. That thing cuts through it no problem at all. Uh, so I don't know the M1 Ultra. I, <laughs> I can't even imagine how insanely powerful that would be. But I think they're cool. Uh, I have no need for it. My bigger thing is... I had no problem spending $700 on the Mac Mini knowing that it was going to be stuck here. Like, I have to be in here at this desk to use that computer. Uh, but the MacBook was a lot more expensive because I upgraded it. And it was important to me that if I was going to invest that much money in a computer, that it be portable so that way I'm not stuck in here and I can take it places. Um, so I wouldn't be comfortable doing the... Um, the super expensive Mac Studio, knowing that I'd be stuck in one location with it. I think they're, uh, the new display, the studio display is super cool. I just, I have this LG display here. Wait, I can turn on my anamorphic, you can see it. It's a 34 inch curved ultra wide. It's literally, it's not a 4K display. There's nothing like really super fancy about this. It, it was the cheapest one that they make, uh, but it's great. You know, I don't need more than that. And of course the MacBook over there has that amazing, uh, I don't know what whatever the new display is on the MacBooks is is really really good. So there we go. Uh, let's see Juan Vega Villa VR. Hi Tom, how are you capturing? Oh sorry, I already answered that one. Uh, we talked about Mac Studio. Does the mix mix cast have that feature on screen console audio editing? Uh, wait, I'm trying to make sure I understand the question. So you you have some control over how you can edit stuff here. You do have a little bit, so like, let's see, if I go back into my playback for my shows, when you go into your recordings, you can like play with markers and scrub through a little more easily than the Roadcaster. You can even rename them right here. Uh, but the actual effects, the Roadcaster is much better at like, you know, I'm gonna go through a channel I'm not gonna mess with right now, but you go through all of these and you have so many granular controls over everything and you have more options. So the Roadcaster is more feature rich in that department than the Mixcast is. The Roadcaster also does have that companion app that I mentioned earlier. So um, when you're doing that, you have all of those same effects up on screen in real time. The Tascam has the podcast editor application where you can kind of do the same thing because you can see what you're recording and you can apply effects to it in real time. The trickier part though is I don't know how that works as an output Output. I haven't tried the Tascam podcast editor as an interface output. I believe when you're running it through there, those effects will apply to the output, but I haven't, haven't tried it myself yet. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, George, what lens? I think we talked about this a minute ago, but it's Sony 24mm f1.4. Robotrix, hi everybody. On hardware, no change is possible. So to improve both products on software, what would you advise each one to learn from the Nemesis? That's a great question. Oh my gosh. I love that question. What can they learn from each other? Um, I think what I've seen is Tascam is trying to cater towards streaming in a way like they have the USB delay. I would love to see I would love to see the roadcaster now that the audience for it does include a lot of streaming people. I would love to see this more geared towards streaming. That would be awesome. I think this is leaning in that direction, even just the goofy voice changing features and stuff. Like that's really fun for streams and things. Um, I like that a lot. The the better headphone preamps, very important right here. Uh, the Rodecaster does not have as much gain as the Tascam, but the gain on the Rodecaster is super clean. So when you go to that max level, you might not be getting the level you want, but at least you're not getting noise there. That gain, those preamps are very, very clean just not the headphone ones. Um, so that's like, it's not just about having large amounts of gain. It's about having the cleanest gain possible. Firmware updates, like Tascam taking a page from Rode's book and doing firmware updates, very important. Um, but I think Rode kind of does have the advantage because like I mentioned earlier, they design and manufacture everything like themselves in Australia. It's so, it, you know, the person who has a, an idea for how a product should look or function or designs it, they can walk over and see it being manufactured just as part of their workday. That's very different than like having to travel overseas to a different, because um, I think this was designed in Japan, made in China. They can't just, you know, the designer can't just go to the factory at any point in time. And I think 
that control. It's almost like an Apple situation where they design the hardware and the software. I think with Rode controlling the manufacturing process from start to finish so much on their stuff, it's easier for them to really like release reliable firmware updates. I'm, I'm wondering if it might be harder for Tascam to do that. That's just like my random thought. I do have uh, my wish list of things I wanted the Rodecaster to improve. Let me see if I can pull this up. Um, I did. I sent this to Rode like a year ago. They sent me an email asking about something else, and I was like, "By the way, <laughs> uh, these are things I would like to see on like a Rodecaster update." Uh, so, so the reason I'm bringing this up is because these are things. Let's see. Number one was better headphone preamp. So the Tascam does that. More clean gain. The Tascam has gain, but it's not. It's really not clean gain. Smoother faders. Yes, that's a difference. Um, the Rodecaster's faders are like the things themselves are made out of metal, but I don't know if you can hear it. I put my mic. Over. It feels like it sounds. Uh, whereas the Tascam, I guess it sounds the same. There. <laughs> it sounds the same there, but these are smoother a little bit. Not it's not like a night and day difference, but these do feel better. Um, but the difference is the Rodecaster. You might not be able to see. There's like these little plastic membranes in here that the faders slide between, and that prevents dirt and dust from getting into the console. The Mixcast doesn't have that, so it's just wide open, which means dirt and dust could get in here and potentially cause problems. I think this is a smarter design for that. Uh, audio delay is a feature I want to see in the Rodecaster Pro. The Tascam has that. Easy USB power. The Tascam doesn't have USB power, although... It has the same kind of power supply as the Rodecaster, so uh, I don't want to risk anything because I'm not, I don't want to, I need to send this to somebody to, so they can use it. I'm wondering if you could use the Rode USB thing with this. Uh, but it would be cool though if instead of having to use like an adapter cable and a weird thing, if like there were an easy way to run either of these just off of USB power. Uh, oh yeah, the sound pad responsiveness on both of these is exactly the same and it's great, it's fine. I would love it if these worked more like a DJ sound mixer here. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. So this is a, uh, oh, let's switch back. <laughs> so this is a, what is this? The Akai MPX 16. This is a sampler that's specifically designed for like music production and stuff. Um, which it's not nearly as easy to load samples on this as it is on either of these devices. But what's really cool about this is the sound pads, even though they feel and look really similar, um, they're like, it's almost like a drum machine. Like as soon as you touch it, it triggers it, as opposed to being a little bit of a delay here. This is very picky, but I would love it if the Rodecaster's pads kind of have that same thing where it's like, like, I don't know. Not that I need to like be playing beats <laughs> off the Rodecaster. <laughs> Um, but sometimes, you know, if you want to add in a sound effect, you're like you're but um or whatever, having that little microsecond delay from the time you push it to the time it hits, like, I don't know. That's very specific and picky. I, I won't be upset if they don't bring that, but that was something I asked. And then reverb and voice effects. That's something that the mixed cast has that the roadcaster doesn't. I think that's fun. Not that it's super duper practical, um, but I think that it's it's fun, especially if it's being used for streaming. Also, also uh, the Mixcast does have combo jacks in the back, so they're XLR jacks and quarter-inch jacks, which mean you can connect like instruments and stuff to the Mixcast. Can't do that with the Rodecaster. I'd love to see that in like a future Rodecaster. The downside, though, is even though this has quarter-inch inputs, it doesn't have line-level inputs, so you only have mic level, which means it's not really like designed for instruments to be plugged into it, but you could. Um, it would be super neat to see something in the future, that's like not just for podcasting, not just for streaming, but also for live music production. I think that, or not necessarily live music production, but music recording and stuff. I think that would be very, very fun. Uh, anyway, that was a great question, Robotrix. Thank you. Drew uh, wrote that out strange. Do you know if there's a cable or a connector? I can connect one XLR mic into two different. I, I oh, actually, I don't know. Because I was thinking, yeah, there's XLR splitter cables. I've seen those. I don't know if the mic signal would work. It couldn't work with the condenser mic, but if you're just running a dynamic mic, that's not taking power, maybe? Is there talkback in the Rodecaster? Uh, 
<laughs> not like this. I know there's... You can use the mute and solo things to do stuff, but it's not just the one button super easy thing uh, like the mix cast is. I think that's super smart. I didn't know it had that till I got it, and I'm very excited for that. Uh, let's see here. Mix cast currently sounds flat. Yeah, sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> Where do you get the colored windscreen for the SM7B? That would be from reporterstore.com. They are based in Denmark? I forget exactly where they're based, uh, but it's not in the U.S. The prices are really low, but it always feels silly. Like, ship this around the world to me, please. So I usually order, like, a bunch at once and then get a bunch. But, yeah, reportstore.com. Um, these also fit the Shure MV7, the SM7B windscreens. And they have some. You can see there's a windscreen on my old TV camera there, like a shotgun windscreen. They have them for all kinds of different mics and stuff. It's cool. Uh, do you have any videos on the Behringer Flow 8? If not, would you make one soon? I don't. I'm not a Behringer guy. Um, Behringer did save my butt as a teacher because I had a computer lab and I needed headphones for every computer, all 50 of them. And uh, Behringer made like decent over-the-ear headphones that were like $10 a piece. And I, it wasn't a total tragedy if like a high school student accidentally broke them or something. Uh, but otherwise, I'm just not a huge fan of of Behringer's tendency to release products that are very, very, very similar to other existing products. So, how's the green guitar? Yes! So, uh, if you happen to see Instagram stories over the while, well, this guitar back here, uh, there's a funny, I'll be as brief as possible. I got this guitar in 2001. It's my very first guitar. The Squire Bullet, it was $90. Uh, in 2002, I thought I would be cool and try to repaint it. And so I like, it had some chips in it because it came with really cheap finish and I was 15. I didn't know how to take care of something nice like a guitar at the time. Uh, so it had a couple chips in it. So I chipped all that off. I painted it this green spray paint thing. And then I realized I had no idea how to resolder it or put it back together. And I, I it just broke it. But it was my first guitar, so I didn't want to get rid of it. And so it's been sitting in a bag in the closet for 20 years. Uh, and so finally, thanks to YouTube University, I found some videos on how to refinish a guitar. So it took me, it spent three and a half weeks. I did, I, I sanded the whole thing down again, like as good as I possibly could. And then I did three coats of prime. No, I did nine coats of primer over three days. I did nine coats of green paint, maybe 10 coats of green paint over three days with like wet sanding and stuff in between. And then I did 17 coats of lacquer over another three or four days. Those are all spread out though, cause weather and wind and like, I couldn't do it day on a daily basis. And then I redid all of the electronics. So there's three new pickups, all new uh, pickup selector thing. And I just watched YouTube videos on how to resolder everything and it totally works. So I finished it yesterday. I spent literally like 13 hours yesterday um, polishing it up so that it's like shiny like new getting everything wired up plug it in it actually works so as of yesterday that guitar makes sound for the first time in 20 years and i wanted to hang it back there for today so it could be on display because it's been in a closet for two decades and i felt bad about that so yeah would you have a spare macbook for your voice i do not i don't i don't just have my my macbook pile over there uh mac studio yeah i don't have any plans i I don't do a lot of computer reviews. I just do them when I get them because they're related to my workflow. Um, I'm super interested in it, and I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Uh, but I'm definitely, I'm definitely not someone who just buys computers to review them. Like, even the Mixcast, the reason I didn't get it was because I didn't want to spend six hundred dollars on something I know I didn't need because I still prefer the Rodecaster. Uh, but luckily, Sweetwater sent this to me, and then I have someone to send it to afterwards, so I don't feel bad about that. What hub are you using to connect everything to Mac Mini? It's the, uh, it's in my Mac Mini review videos. It's the Hagabus. <laughs> um, it has a, it has an internal spot for one terabyte, which is cool. One terabyte hard drive. So I was able to add more storage to the computer that way. And it has four USB ports and uh, SD card and micro SD card slots. And it's been great. It, it doesn't require extra power or anything. So like I have the, what I have, I have the Tascams running through it, um, the Stream Deck pedals running through it, the A7 IV is running through the hub. It's working great. I love it. Uh, how do you create a marker with the Rodecaster Pro? My answer is on accident. 
<laughs> uh, let's see, actually, because I always do them, but I never remember how I do them. Uh, let's go into... What? I guess we'll have to undo it over here so you can hear me over here now. Uh, let's bring that up. Okay. Uh, if I play through the... Oi! Sorry. If I play through this, there's a little marker thing here that you can add markers to there. Oh, now I'm back and I'm echoing. We don't need to be echoing. But while you're recording, that is such a good question. I've only ever done it on accident. Oh, ha. it's this button right here. You just push the little flag. So that shows you how often I've been taking advantage of that feature <laughs> over the past three and a half years. Uh, can you change the audio banks on either one while recording live? No unfortunately uh, and the task cam is like really actually kind of annoying so like these ones right here i can't change anything to i guess i could play like plug in my mic over here uh here's an alarm i yeah but i can't change any of these like if i don't want those i can't do anything this isn't even a recording i have to go to a blank one Oh, wait, no, I have to go into the menu, sound pads. Then I can go to the blank ones. Wait. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I can do it right here. I lied. I'm a liar. I can select the pad I want. Perfect. And then I can do pad advanced, and I can change stuff here. But if I'm recording, it won't let me go into that menu at all. Uh, so, yeah, you have to set everything before you record. But that's the case on both of these units not just the task cam. Uh, there we go. Boop, boop, boop. That's a good question though. Linwood, what's up? It's so nice to see you. If you're a one person show, would Ecamm Live suffice or do you really need all the features of either assuming a decent audio interface? Uh, Ecamm is super powerful. You can keep adding in. I mean, I have both of these running through Ecamm right now, but there's no reason this couldn't just be a Scarlet or a USB mic or something. And then, especially if you pair it with Loopback, then you can get all the sources there. So to answer your question, you can totally get by with just Ecamm. Yeah. Who makes the best YouTube videos and why is it Tom Buck? It's just like, you know how the speed of light is like a constant law of the universe? It's just that, I'm just kidding. Thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, the breeding ground, living with disabilities, but I can't find a proper multi-line call-in phone web solution so I can have a queue and a screener. Uh, StreamYard, I don't, I don't know if you played around StreamYard. If you want to do it live, StreamYard could be good because it has the green room where you can keep everyone there and ecamm's interview Streamyard will let you do 10 people ecamm will let you do five people um, and ecamm kind of works the same i like it better for many reasons uh, but people can call in and then you can keep them like off screen and bring them in when you want and they can talk to each other but Streamyard works great too um, and both platforms have the option for like a private chat between the people who are waiting to go on or between you and them which is really cool so those are my recommendations uh, OTC, been using the Rodecaster Pro with Riverside, nothing but issues, leveling and noise suppression. Um, I've used mine with Riverside, and I know Riverside specifically, when you select Rodecaster, they pop up a warning that says, like, use headphones or use USB mix minus. I haven't had any issues, but I don't really use any of the processing in my Rodecaster, so you can even notice, like, my processing is not even turned on. The only thing that it is turned on is if we go to master compressor, I do have that turned on just kind of on like default settings, but that's really it. So if you're using some of the Rodecaster's other processing capabilities, maybe those are messing with Riverside some way. Yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, what type of the pickups? Oh, that's a good question. They're all single coil, but they're all Seymour Duncan. Uh, the middle and the bri the middle and the neck are like standard Stratocaster uh Seymour Duncan pickups but the bridge pickup is a Seymour Duncan hot rails pickup so it's like a humbucker in the size of a single coil with ridiculous amount of output uh, I kind of want to put that in a couple of my other guitars too gain sliders or knobs I am a slider guy yes do you have a favorite overdrive distortion pedal I actually just use my um I have a Fender mustang something amp over there and i just like the the distortion built in there uh and prior to that well i still have it too i have a an older fender princeton amp and i like i just that's what turned me on the fender i just really like their built-in sounds 
Uh, what do you think of Restream? I've been using it. It's great. Yeah, uh, Restream is super helpful, super cool if you want to stream on multiple platforms at once, for sure. Does Tascam have anything similar to Aphex? No. And that's I'm really glad you brought that up because the Rodecaster has this thing here that says Aphex on board. And that actually, like, it, it is marketing, of course, but it also is like road paid to acquire the licensing to use higher end processing technology on board the roadcaster whereas Tascam didn't i don't know what they're using or if it's a self-made thing and i think that's why i personally knowing that i've used the roadcaster longer than a Tascam, so it might not be a super fair comparison but that's why i prefer the roadcaster's quality of its onboard stuff versus the Tascams, um just for that reason uh, and Rob the Maritimer, what's the best for mixing audio if you have no Collins but want to mix my voice with my desktop audio? Um, I mean, okay, well, Ecamm and OBS, let's say that either of those, you could add like a USB microphone and system audio and then just do it virtually there. If you're looking at a mixer like either of these, either one will perform. You might even want to check out because it's a little less expensive, but the Go XLR might even be a, a, a good choice too. What headphones do you prefer? These are Mezzi 99 Neos, and I really love them because they're super comfortable. They're geared a little more towards listening to, to audio, not creating audio, but they're just so comfortable. Um, I will say that I'm very excited for something that might be coming up in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> I needed the ding sound effect there. Uh, Ecamm Live Interview, Pete asks, I play sound effects and it muffled guest audio. I haven't, oh, you know what I bet that is? Uh, if you have echo cancellation turned on in Ecamm, it does weird things sometimes. And it really messed me up like a year ago. My wife and I were doing a podcast and it, we were like, it was almost like my mic wasn't working because Ecamm was trying to cancel out our audio. And it took me, we went through the whole show. I was so frustrated. And finally afterwards, I realized it was just the echo cancellation. So I always keep my Ecamm echo cancellation turned off for that reason. Uh, all righty. So those are the questions there. Uh, we got about 10 minutes left here. So let's jump in and see uh, just what everyone's saying before we wrap up for the day here. I'm trying to do my best to catch up. I appreciate all of the awesome moderators uh, giving me their time on Saturday. Oh, yeah, Paul, the green guitar. I'm, it's, I'll show you. I'm very proud of this. So it's not perfect. Ah, let me plug these in. Um, and I did get, I found like these custom blue and pink knobs. But if you can see, like, I actually was able to get like a glossy, legit finish on it. It just it looks like there's a big old, oh, there is a big old scratch on it. That's from, what is that from? That's from high school. <laughs> um, yeah, so, dang. There's stories to this guitar, but yeah, it's it's pretty dang legit. And then what's funny is, I don't know if you can see it through here. Maybe I could do it in my anamorphic camera, but on the, uh, the neck plate is actually an Ibanez neck plate on this Squire guitar because my very, very first thing a month before this, I bought an Ibanez bass from a pawn shop and I ended up selling that a couple years later, but it was like my first electric stringed instrument. And so I switch the neck plates from this to that so that way i'd have that piece from that first thing here and this was my first guitar and up until yesterday it had just been sitting in a um sitting in a bag for 20 years and now it works again i'm gonna play that <laughs> later today it's cool uh yeah paul's color there you go green with envy you might say <laughs> sorry nerd affiliate super chat stop making dope videos Wait, stop making dope. Oh, <laughs> stop making videos, you dope. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. Wow, I'm way behind on these comments here. Oh, Bailey's here. What's up, Bailey? Power moderator right there. Uh, the dynamic microphone I'm using right now is the, this is actually a condenser microphone. It is the Earthworks Icon, and I do really like it. Um, been, I've been trying to plan a video on it because I don't want to just do a review on it. You can find those like Epos Vox and Podcastage and stuff and Curtis Judd have all covered this microphone. It's great. But Earthworks as a company 
super interesting and i was totally unfamiliar with them until like eight or nine months ago so i kind of want to do a video that dives into like who the heck are they yeah uh that's that's how i feel like let's see here netherlands for reporter store thank you let's see with ecamm do you still need zoom to record interviews nope uh you can just have everyone call in directly through ecamm and you can get individual audio for every person too which is super cool uh and let's see here i apologize if i if i miss a comment or a question i'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible Ooh, what are your thoughts on trademarking and podcasting uh i like that podcasting is still like one of the few if not the only like open wild west parts of the internet still and that's the big reason that i personally switched i don't know if this is the question you asked but it's the answer you're getting it's one of the reasons i switched from anchor to buzzsprout is because I did this like a year and a half ago, but Anchor is a great tool and it's a free, awesome way to start podcasting. Um, but Spotify, who owns Anchor, they're very much doing the walled garden, you know, premium exclusive content. And I love that podcasting is just open for everybody. And so, uh, you know, if you're talking about your own stuff, like your own show, your own properties, yeah, protect that stuff all you want. But when it comes to platforms and things controlling it, I like open for everybody. That's what I like. How did you cover up or move the branding on the road? <laughs> Boom arm. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Look at that. Yeah, there's no logos. No. I love I love road very much, but I did not like the logos. The logos are driving me loco. So in my review of the PSA 1 Plus, I talked about using some. Uh, it was a solvent to remove vinyl letters off of shirts. Like it's like $20 on Amazon. I think there's a link in that video description. And I had tried removing it on here, and it didn't do the best job. When I was done with that video, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to like soak that. <laughs> I just like poured so much of that on here. And then I used an alcohol wipe and just scrubbed. And each logo probably took 20 minutes to totally get off. And there are four logos on here, but there's no trace of them anymore. Um, and I use an alcohol wipe because paper towel shredded and a regular cloth like started actually would mess up the sleeve. So an alcohol wipe the alcohol actually helps remove the, the letters and then it also didn't mess up the sleeve and it didn't shred. So uh, that worked really, really well. All right. What's a good mixer for doing live streams? I mean, they're the Rodecaster Pro. If you don't need something this big, I think the Go XLR is pretty great. All righty. Uh, look at that. We had 100 likes. That's amazing. <laughs> I like that. I guess I could be 101 then. Uh, that's perfect. Perfect time to wrap things up here. So uh, we went over some of the features here. Uh, I'll probably link to this live stream in my review video. The review of the Mixcast is going to come out on the 24th. I'm still finishing that up, so it's not going to come out this week. It'll come out next week. And that's more in-depth between both of these. My, I can spoil that for you, though, and just tell you that my conclusion is that they are both great. You can't go wrong either way. They do have some specific strengths. So if you have like that real specific thing, one of them might be better than the other. But honestly, like whichever one you can find for cheaper is probably the way to go. They have the same retail price, but if you find it on sale somewhere, that might be your deciding factor. Or in stock, since a lot of stuff's not in stock. I still prefer the Roadcaster. Uh, for, if for no other reason than it is the original, and I like that and I respect that, and I think that counts for something. Um, and uh, Road just, they just did it right with the Roadcaster. A really big thing, which I did mention, but I kind of glossed over like how important it is, is I do not like that there are not channel buttons here. Like the Roadcaster has these four buttons. It's very frustrating when I want to go into a channel, you know, hey, I need to change my gain on here. I have to press a menu, press a menu, press a menu, and then I get to those settings. The Roadcaster, I can just go like that. And once I'm in a setting, it will just stay there. So I can just go right back to that screen with the press of a button. Um, that's really helpful when you're trying to do that stuff on the fly. So uh, Roadcaster is still very much the winner for me, but I'm also super biased. So I'm trying to acknowledge that and set that aside when looking at both of these. And they are both excellent. I don't think I mentioned it in this stream, um, but the Tascam, like the build quality on both of these is equally as good. They're both very heavy duty, very durable, very well made. Um, they feel great to use. They look great. They're super cool looking and fun and everything. So. Uh, thanks so much, everybody, for being here. It's super fun. Uh, always fun to do live streams. And, uh, you know, you can always reach out to me. I do my best to try to get back to messages in a reasonable time frame. And, uh, yeah, look forward. 
This week's video is going to be about the Deity USB microphone that they released a few weeks ago. Next week will be about the Mixcast, and the following week will be about something uh, that I can't tell you about yet. That's just going to be very exciting. So um, thanks for being here. I hope you guys have a safe, happy, healthy, fun rest of your weekend, and I will see you next time.